The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Mary was a traveler. And, uh, you know, we think of her as a very simple, humble, uh, impoverished, perhaps, um, uh, young woman in Nazareth. Uh, and yet we know of her journey to Bethlehem uh, with Joseph. But what we don't often advert to is immediately after the Annunciation, she's uh, uh, taking a two, at least, possibly three-day journey through what was occasionally at least, hostile territory, crossing uh, possibly a couple of borders to go down to Ein Karem, which is near Jerusalem, from Nazareth. Um, That, we would say, was no little journey uh, to go down to visit, or to go up actually, to the hill country in Judah. to go up to that area from Nazareth. Uh, She may very well have faced hostility and social discrimination because to do that she had to go through or at least skirt around uh, Samaritan territory and the Roman occupiers were always on guard. She could not have traveled alone. Uh, That would simply have been an impossibility. She would have to join some kind of a group of travelers, a group of pilgrims. But it's not unlikely, in addition to that visit uh, to, um, to Elizabeth, it's not unlikely that she and her family and a great part of the uh, population of Nazareth would go to Jerusalem three times a year for the pilgrimage feasts. That too involved a um, a a one-way trip of at least two days, uh, walking at a pretty good hefty pace. So in a group probably more like three or four days. In other words, it could could well be for those pilgrimage feasts, could well have been a week and a half total project. We know of one of those, and that was uh, when Jesus was he was actually bar mitzvahed um, when he stayed behind in the temple. But the pilgrimage feasts were very normal for any pious Jew living, living within a possible travel distance. So Mary was quite a traveler after Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, she, I believe, almost certainly, uh, you know, spent a great part of her time uh, towards her last days, uh, kind of in seclusion in Ephesus. 
but it's not unlikely that she made the journey from time to time back to Jerusalem or other places where the apostles were. Um, so Mary continues to be quite a traveler. And as the Christianity came along with, sadly, the conquering sword into the, quote, new world, um, the, she came with them, and that's the feast that we're celebrating today. She didn't appear officially to anybody. She was with the poor. She was with those who were being oppressed, and she gave them hope and continues to give them hope. And so as we celebrate this day, we need to realize that um, the kingdom of God does not have borders, nor walls. The kingdom of man does. We have to navigate within that territory where um, human interests, often motivated by self-centered interests, um, continue to collide at borders with the, uh, with the kingdom of God. And if we are dedicated to the kingdom of God, our dedication has to be, no matter what our situation, even our political interests might be, our situation, our commitment <coughs> has to be to discover ways to erase those borders, to overcome those borders, to transcend those borders. It's not necessarily a matter of knocking down walls. It is a matter, I think, of being very skeptical about building walls, but it certainly is a matter of transcending walls. And so very often when human interests are building those walls, our job as faithful children of God and faithful children of Mary, is to pay attention to the other side, to uh, uh, be one in heart, one in spirit, and one in witness to the human dignity of those who are often at the victim of uh, human and um, self-interest, shall we say. So, as we celebrate Mary, we need also to imitate Mary, who is with the people who are um, oppressed, who are um, who are hurting. 